going buyback over a BK socket, BK cast, the coyote airlock. I pull the vacuum nylon over it, tie it off on the anchor, the thread. Get rid of my waist so it doesn't help sort of stop my lock from going on. <clears throat> this lock has an MDI connector on the end of it, so it's already pre-aligned with a little bit of an outset. Determine my orientation where I want to put it on the socket. A little bit of coyote glue on my lock to make sure it doesn't move. When I pull my plastic, it stays nice and still. Since we do have an MDI connector on the end to give us some kind of alignment, it's nice to make sure that that lock doesn't move. That way, that button stays in that medial wall right where you want it. it give us a little bit of a beginning alignment in a test socket. So our glue sets up, our plastic is ready, we're ready to blister form, buyback plastic over the top of this socket. Now you can see that drawing in around the lock. All this area just sucked down tight, back around the back side of our alignable four hole connector. Now when pulling vivac or blister forming over an airlock with a connector or without a connector on it. If you have issues with vacuum drawing here because possibly it trapped somewhere before it came in, have a string handy or a piece of nylon. And as it's drawing in and cooling, or while it's still warm, you can take the string and come around it like that and help the plastic out draw in around it. Typically, you won't have an issue with this drawing in. It'll be nice and tight. The air starts drawing down, it sucks into here, it collects in your wick and it pulls it straight down, you've got a nice, tight, solid connector on the end of your cast, just like if it was laminated or done in a co-poly or some other type of plastic. That connector's offset. You can see how well it drew in right here. And then show that kind of posterior side also. Okay, now that it's done, you're able to sand this down to the points of your metal, sand the face of your pin connection, take out your dummy plug, you're ready to put your guts in. The socket could be pulled with the puller, possibly, if you're afraid you're going to break your vivac, then do whatever method you want, chip it out, break it out, tap it off, however you like to do. Now that our plastic's cooled off, cut it off the cast. <clears throat> Before I cut it off, sanded the bottom down to my three, four, excuse me, foam dots. Sanded my tooling that was in here for the plug, took it out, cut out the top of my socket, hooked on my puller connector, pulled the socket. As you can see inside here, using the nylon on the cast underneath the lock, very very good draw on the plastic so if you're looking for a complete suction type socket when you make one in this in this fashion blister pulling it the one area you want to look for or check every time is on your tooling piece that you take out it's right here on the top of the lock is the only place 
where you may have issue with gapping away from the actual socket itself. You see a very slight amount right in here. A couple of ways of testing this would be to put water in the socket, let it sit. Once you have your actual uh, uh, working parts inside of the lock to see if you're retaining water, find out where your leakage is so you can seal that with whatever you want to use. But this will be the one spot if you have any issue to look for if you want a sealed vacuum socket with a pin lock on the end of it in a blister pull like this. To make sure the bottom is flat, I come over to my Troutman and use a little finer wheel and check it all the way around for flat. So after doing it that technique, I don't know if you can see that or not. Okay. This four hole sanded in that way will accept any connector that works in the four hole. A rotable, whatever type it is, won't be in a bind, it's nice and flat. Very simple to do.